going to redo Snow Peak. Show one strat that might be useful for all dungeons if you're worried about dying. Uh, if you can roll frame perfectly, going across the ice is faster, but nobody rolls frame perfectly. So I already explained most of this stuff in the um, first time I went through and did this. I'm not going to explain it right here. I'm just going to show what it looks like done correctly. And then I'm going to show off the strat here actually because... Okay. So basically if you stand like here and target in the window, you can get back without voiding. So for all dungeons, that's kind of nice sometimes. Because it's pretty easy to die here. But anyways, like I said, I'm not going to explain any of this stuff right now. Because this is just redoing what I already did. Um, it's like the exact same. I think I've changed all of my strats. Other than apparently failing horribly. That's a little backup you can do, I guess it's nice to show off. Because if you miss the uh, the fast way of doing it, you can do it that way. Whatever. Alright, I think I failed the dark camera fight the first time I did this. Basically, you just want to drop this behind his tail. Wait for it to explode and then jump spin. It's really easy. Um, yeah. Alright, so in all dungeons, this is like the start of the new stuff, I guess. Um, basically, you just don't want to save warp because you want to do a bomb boost. There is a way to get to the place we want to get to that's probably. Maybe easier, I guess, but it's like a minute slower if you grab a small key before this point and you can save work. But, uh, obviously you're not doing that. So, yeah, you should be facing the door that you want to exit from if you like a Z target after getting the ball and chain, so long as you didn't mess up the fight. But, anyways, we're gonna want to equip the ball and chain before we go out this door. We'll leave the bombs equipped, that makes sense. So, we're gonna hold ZL and left and A. I don't think- I don't remember if you have to hold all of those, but that's gonna allow us to break out immediately and throw the ball and chain faster. We wanna break free from the ice, and then basically what we're gonna do here is- So I climb up right so that, um... I mean, my eye tracker should be seeing it, but I'm lined up so his feet are be between these little lines here. And then what I'm gonna do is- This is a setup from, um... Draconif, I think. So I'm gonna put on Iron Boots, I'm gonna roll forward, and then I'm gonna back hop. And then I wanna angle so that basically this icicle is like just to the right of the center. So like the top of the icicle. I pull out a bomb, and then I wait until the height of the fourth thing, and then go. Of course I fail. Horribly. Um, but yeah, that's the general idea. It's hard to explain like well. terribly done. Um, but basically, so I do this little back up. And I want to walk into... Yeah, I swear this is consistent. Basically, you want to do that and then side hop up, or jump slash up. I think I'm going to go ahead and game over and just waste some bombs so that I can do this easier. And, like, show it off more times. How am I failing this, this many times? I know I haven't practiced this in a while, but Jesus. So 
kind of like that. So apparently I got it twice out of like all of those tries. Um, so this is gonna spawn me back in front of the. This is what I'm getting you over here. It's gonna spawn me back in front of the freezer, so I can show this off again. I should already be broken though. Yeah, you definitely don't want to take it to the tries to get out of here because you don't want to have to grab bombs later. They are a little tight if you mess this up many times. Um, yeah. Here. I'm gonna show it a couple more times. I think just one more probably because I'm not gonna die in the middle of the fight. So yeah, like I said, it's basically the height. It's like a two-frame window, I think, so that's why I was failing it so hard. Um, but it's the height of the fourth flash, is when you want to take off the boots and then you start walking forward. You want to walk as much forward as possible. The reason we angle before pulling out the bomb, I mean, you can do it after pulling out the bomb to save a little time, I guess, but the reason we angle is so that we can walk straight forward and it'll put us in the right spot, so that we bomb boost onto the ledge. Um, and that's probably most of what makes Snow Peak hard. These LJs are not that bad. So basically I roll over here and then I like angle such that I'm not, I just don't want to be like too diagonal. So like I want to be facing like um, towards the far wall more than the close wall. And then I can side up onto this ledge. I think there's other ways to do this, but this is just what I tend to do. And then I target above the roof, right? And then once it's over the ledge, I do the LJ. It's like just something you have to do. Um, you can break this if you want to not have to do bomb boost again. But this LJ is pretty consistent, so I don't really see the point myself. Um, but you want to stand... Okay, so basically there's no sword recoil on HD, so you can stand in a lot of places and have this work. But what I do is... So there's like this little bump here. Um, and I just kind of stand on this left side, but not quite up to the bump, so like around here-ish. And then I target to the right of these icicles above the roof. Actually above the roof. And then once it's over the ledge, I go. If you grab with two hands here, you can climb early. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you'll just be there waiting. And of course, I get left door. Um... So this room is pretty simple. Like it's not hard, it's just varies in terms of the amount of time you're gonna lose here. You can do a little target roll and hold the little forward. Uh, I and mean, as long as you keep your angle pretty much, you can just throw the ball and change straight away. Hit these guys, target this guy, throw, kill him. And then what I tend to do is I do a little roll and then I back roll. And I'm already facing the right direction because I angle a little to the left. And then I get those guys, and then I get these guys. That guy's usually gonna hit me there. And then I, since he hit me to that guy, I go kill that guy, and then kill this guy. Uh, presumably without failing it. Um, but yeah. It's, it's like pretty simple movement, but it's something that you just kinda have to practice. It doesn't take too long to explain. Um, so there's a frame after getting the boss key where you can slide hop. And you have to hold the direction I'm holding because I ain't a lock glitch. Um, but that allows you to avoid a midnight text. And you can just kind of hop off towards the door. Now, ideally at this point, you would have a lot more <laughs> health than this. Uh, but since I went off of the game over and did two bomb boosts, I'm at pretty low health right now. Ideally, you're at, like, above two hearts, or, like, half a fairy or something. You can definitely grab one in lake bed if you're, like, really worried about it, but I think there's other faster strats. Like, that strat that, uh, didn't hit the ground, um, or that didn't void in the first half is good at, like, keeping health. Okay, so this fight is... You just have to kind of practice the first phase. Um, this is like the time where it's probably easiest to get hit, and each time you get hit it does one heart of damage. 
Now, once you get the first four hits, there'll be, like, little small guys that get sent out. And they only do half a heart to you, but they drop hearts. Um, so if you make it to that point, you can waste time to get some of those. But anyways, so what I want to do is I want to just have this thing bounce back and forth on the wall as much as possible. And just try to, try to aim forwards as much as possible. It doesn't always work, though. So I'm going to go ahead and take my own advice and get a heart. And then you kind of just want to predict where it's going to go. It's as unpredictable as it is. You just guess. <laughs> you literally just, like, guess. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly how to explain how you know where it's going to go. It's just... You just kind of do. Um, the second phase is pretty easy. So you can... I guess I'll pause to explain. You can aim up immediately here and destroy a couple of these things. Um, if you want to have the part where the icicles fall be a little faster, because it is dependent, the, the amount of time it takes is dependent on the amount of icicles there are. Um, so it is a little faster to destroy some of these. The problem is that the setup that I'm going to do, you want to end up stuck inside the circle. And it just so happens that like if you break some of these, the odds that the icicle that you need to be hitting you or the icicle that is supposed to be behind you that keeps you from going, like, sliding too far out. Those, I mean, the odds are, like, decent that those just won't be there if you destroy them. So I wouldn't destroy any of these. So what, generally what I do is I pick up any hearts that are remaining, and then I just kind of roll around the edge here. There's ten of them, so you can count to ten. And then basically I line up with one of these center guys and then walk back a little. And then you kind of want to... So, okay, you, you can kind of see my positioning here. I want to be such that, like, I'm going to get hit by the icicle such that I bounce inwards, but that I don't get completely missed by the icicle. So that was good positioning, for example. Um, and then I'm going to swing, and then throw, and then aim and throw. But I <laughs> sat there aiming the first time too long. Because um, I'm stupid. But basically, I can just do the same thing again. It's just that... Oh, I'm getting insane. I'll probably show this whole thing off again. Just to get, like, give a better idea of exactly what's going on. But basically, if I don't destroy any icicles, I can just do the exact same thing. And kind of get hit into the circle. And then just hit her. And it's pretty easy. But you should be able to pretty easily get... Yeah, I'm doing a tutorial, so we're gonna go back and re-explain that, because I did a piss poor job doing that the first time. Um, but yeah, basically... How do I put this? Um, because I was trying to explain and pause while I was swinging the ball and chain, I couldn't pause, so I couldn't explain it very well. But what I do in that fight, which I, what is, it, is what I was trying to do, is I, I swing and then keep swinging so that I can adjust the aim a little bit, so that I can hit the second one for sure. And usually that's pretty fast, so I can just throw it immediately after that, because I'm already facing the right direction. But sometimes you have to, like, wait to re-aim. And what I was trying to do is, since I was slow on the second one, I was going to try to aim at the third one, since if I threw it immediately, it would bounce off the bottom. Um, and it just didn't work, because I aimed at the wrong spot. Anyways, we're gonna do all of Snow Peak again, just because it's, you know, I just to, <laughs> considering how bad that was. But I'm not gonna explain as much stuff this time, just because I want, I want to show what it looks like done correctly, most, mostly correctly at least. As correctly as I can do it right now, you know, having not practiced this in a bit. So again, if you want to save a heart, you can not void here and do the thing that I did in the beginning, um, where you don't void, but uh, you don't really need to, unless you, like, somehow took damage before this. Like, anyways, you, you just kind of have to calculate how many, how many hearts you need. 
based on the damage that you're guaranteed to take, and then decide if it's worth the risk. It's about three seconds to do the alternate setup to get back, rather than avoiding. Let's see if I can actually do freeze art skip correctly this time. Yeah, I always just walk into that corner and then open the door. Because that's a lot more consistent for me than back walking with a Z target into the right door. Which would theoretically be faster. Anyways. Drop the bomb, roll. And you kind of want to go to this direction just to angle his tail towards the bomb so it gets hit. Now, I mean, like, the direction that the bomb drops from being dropped by your sword, um... Is like a little random, I guess, but I don't know, it's not usually a big deal. You can pretty much always get the tail to be in range if you just drop it right behind him at the very back. So yeah, like I said, I'm gonna grab the bomb chain. I actually could have the bomb chain. Let me go out here, we hold ZL and right. And A. I think the A is necessary. Because you're like doing like a little bit of stuff. I'm not entirely sure, so don't put me on that. Yeah, then I kind of climb up here so that my feet are in between the lines again. I angle here. I pull out a bomb. And then at the height of the fourth flash, I take off the air to so go. I jump slash up a couple times. I angle so that I'm facing basically not too far to the left after the side hop. And again, you can destroy that ice, um, but usually you don't fail this part. And hopefully we didn't block there. Line up in front of the ledge, at the edge. LJ next to the two icicles. Usually while I'm on this ledge, I can go ahead and equip ball and chain. Um, if you get two hands, you can climb up immediately though, like I said. You just, I would not eat, sometimes the timing works out so that if you grab with one hand you can still climb up, but I would not recommend going for it, because I don't understand exactly how it works, honestly. Like I said, pull forward, pull forward, kill those two guys, and, uh, an angle, you just kind of want to basically do a backflip so that you don't get hit by them, and then, uh, Kind of hit them, pull forward and hit the other two guys, and then kill these guys individually. There's really not a whole lot of ways to make this faster, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, if you had bomb arrows, you could do it a different way, but I never particularly liked that way. This way seems to be fairly quick. So again, I'm gonna buff on the side hop. And Try not to bonk literally everywhere. Oh, I probably should have changed the title to be tutorial. But yes, we get to talk to Yetta while she's inside the freezer that we never killed. Hello, Mio. go in here, and again, first phase, we pretty much just want to throw, like, directly at the, um, the thing. So, we want, like, for the first four hits, we want it to bounce as much forward and backward as possible, and not to the sides. Because it's hard to predict which side it's going to go to, for example, there. I guess wrong there, but the good thing is that um, if it hits you and you already have the ball and chain all the way out, generally it'll hit it on the way back. So it doesn't lose that much time. That was decent other than um, it going to the right pretty early. You can kind of judge by where the music is when you finish the first phase, like if it was okay or not. 
Nice camera. I'm not sure why I did that. Anyways, I have enough health, so it should be better. So again, you kind of want to stand so that you know you're going to get hit. So I aimed there just because I was paranoid that she was too high up already, but um, you can generally just throw it immediately. Uh, yeah, that's how that looks correctly. So I think I didn't really mess anything up other than just random movement crap. A little slow. Yeah, that's basically how that works. I make that look like not too bad, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> Obviously, I was messing up the bomb beast earlier. That's I think a tomb frame window to like take off. To initiate taking off iron boots and then start walking forward. Um, but as long as you can hold forward and not like forward and to the side a little. Um, well, I'm gonna do a backflip here, by the way. Um, but as long as you can hold forward, it's basically just a timing trick, so it's not too bad. Um, anyway, so I did a backflip there. That's actually kind of important. You just buffer it. Like after Minda stops talking, um, and you'll get it for sure in HD. It's not like you have to time it like on H uh, on SD. I mean, um, but basically, what this is gonna allow us to do is we're in a position where it's really easy to grab the target container if we can hold left and just spam the ball and chain button. Um, and so basically, what's gonna happen here is Link is gonna throw the ball and chain. At the uh, the heart container, and as long as the ball and chain hits the heart container while it's like on the way out, you'll grab it in midair like that. And usually, you're gonna want to grab that because you're gonna have low health here. <laughs> so, um, generally in all dungeons runs, what I do is I grab all of the heart containers up to this point, and then I grab this one. Um, so I would have seven hearts here like I do right now. It's just because, like, every heart container is like three or four seconds, and, um, grabbing a fairy takes like ten seconds or something. So generally speaking, I'd rather just grab more heart containers than grab a fairy so that I don't die in Snow Peak. Um, and I think it's fairly safe if you grab this many heart containers, but anyways. So yeah, once we finish Snow Peak Ruins, it conveniently puts us out here. And we have full health, and we can just go to Death Mountain. Yeah, I'm not sure how well I can show this off, but I'll see what I can do. Um, this trick is interesting. Yeah, basically, if you hurry over here, you can get over here uh, before getting hit by a meteor. And then what you want to do is you, you, so you go into this left corner, like I'm standing here. Right? And then I, I kind of walk slowly, like mostly into the wall, but so that he's walking to the left. And then as soon as he climbs up, then I can target and do like a target roll. Right? And after after I start the target roll, I want to be holding straight forward. And then as soon as I see Link hop, so I need to hold forward so that it gets height off of the hop. Right? Because there's like a little seam here. Um, and then I can press B so that I actually land on the land here rather than falling through the gap. Um, you clip easier, like you'll clip guaranteed if you just do a target roll after doing what I did, uh, and don't hold any direction. The problem is that you have like one frame then, I think, to do the B attack. So it's like precision and holding forward, which is not super easy on HD and not having to like lose a ton of time if you fail it uh, versus versus like voiding, losing a heart, having to transform into a wolf and like roll all the way back up here and do a bunch of crap for like a one frame window, which is just ridiculous. So I always just hold forward, but uh, I'm just saying you can do it the other way. So like I said, so might as well go back down, but I, I walk forward, right? 
target, roll, hold forward. And I was holding forward enough. Um, it's not, I don't think you have to be holding, like, perfectly straightforward, but it's pretty close to straightforward. And then I do a little B attack, and I keep the, the target held so that I don't target the Goron. And what I do is I do another jump attack so that I don't get hit by the Goron, because if the Goron hits you there, there's a good chance he hits you out of bounds. Um, and then basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk up to this corner, and then I'm going to aim kind of that way. And as soon as it's out of bounds, I'm going to go this way. So I might chew it again, um, just because I can. How it looks, because that was not a particularly good tutorial. I lined up pretty far to the right, and that's not usually where you want to line up. Um, let me please go. Alright, so once again, slowly left. Just like that. Okay. Yeah, so you don't want to walk too far forward. I, actually, this is good, because I can show where it avoids you too. So this is why you don't generally want to avoid there. Because it'll put you like, all the way back here, and you have to transform and grab. It's slow, so... I think it also resets the meteor cycle to start back up again. You don't really want that. So you saw there... Okay, so that was good aim. Um, Alright. So you want to really stand more to the left so that you can actually see where you're aiming. I'm just going off of instinct right now and it's working. Um, but basically... During an LJA, once the once you have your short out, you can like angle the camera. As long as you don't like press ZL or something, you sh you're still uh, Z targeted on the um, the boomerang, so it doesn't mess up the LJA. And you can move the camera so that you can see whenever. Basically, um, so you see the the void below Link's feet. It's like once the the boomerang is above that void rather than above the brown part that we're gonna land on is when I want to jump. If you jump too late and your angle isn't like super far to the left then you end up voiding to the right here but this should land in balance right there yeah. It's kind of sketchy though. Um, generally you have better results if you line up further to the right. I haven't done this in a while though so I'm just gonna keep showing this off for a little bit. Make sure that I get, like, a good example. Um, another thing you can do... ...is you can throw the boomerang into the Goron to stun him. So that he doesn't attack you immediately. And that's the problem, so... The reason that you would want to line up further right is so that he can't attack you at all. Um, but if you throw, if you angle far enough left so that you're throwing the boomerang into the Goron... He won't attack you until you can LJ. So it's usually pretty safe. Like when I landed on balance. I kind of aim a little far right there compared to what I would normally do, but it's fine. You can transform this little corner here. This is pretty much always going to be faster than going up with the Goron. Uh, so we'll do it one more time and go. Okay, so it's kind of hard for me to, like, actually show you where I'm aiming. Because this guy wants to attack me. But you kind of aim here-ish. Um, you don't want to aim further right than that. But you want to aim, like far right enough so that you land on this ledge rather than all the way at the bottom and having to climb an extra ledge, so I don't know. I don't know how else to explain that. If you roll across switches with iron boots on it, triggers them for sure. You can also like try to walk onto them slowly and do that, but eh. Um, so I'm not actually going to move the control stick here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to equip the spinner use it, and as soon as I'm, like, basically touching the Goron, I will go ahead and get off of the spinner. And so I'm gonna talk to this guy until I say yes or no. It's faster to say yes. Um, 
And basically what's that what that is going to do is it's going to trigger a um basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna cause the um the Gorons in the back to move apart because that'll set a flag that essentially um Normally what it would do is it, it puts the Gorons apart and has the, the main Goron in the middle um, waiting for you to come back into the room. So like when you re-enter, that's how it would look um, after you have done sumo at all. But the there will still be invisible walls between the Gorons and where the Goron Elder is supposed to be standing in the middle there. Um, because the game doesn't want you just walking past him to get into the dungeon. Anyways, point is, he won't actually be in the middle because the states are all messed up. So, the invisible walls are still there and you can't just walk between them. Um, but you can use the spinner to go in between a seam to get through them. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to lo reload the room. So you can LJA, which I think is better. Or you can stand like around here-ish, which is hard to do fast. And then do a jump attack. It doesn't really matter either way, but I just wanted to show how it looked. But <laughs> um, anyways, you see they're they're apart now, so you can spin her between. Um, let me see where I'm supposed to stand. Maybe it's like a little further forward than that. Yeah. So you see how I jump attacked over the trigger? It's kind of precise to do that. Um, but obviously, you can also do an LJ to get across. And basically, what that's gonna do is if you void there rather than exiting and re-entering. Exiting and re-entering works, but it's just a little slower. What'll happen is the, um, you'll come back up through the same entrance, which will be the elevator, and then you can just use the spinner to get past the Goron again and enter. Um, and it's slightly faster, but I'll show off the LJA method. And this is consistent, because you get a ton of, ton of range on it. So, so basically you can just do the LJA and then roll off. And again, if I did this correctly, it would have put me in the elevator and I would have spinned out, but it's fine. Anyways, jump attack is faster than the LJ, but the LJ is far more consistent. Oh, and I'm gonna show, just to show, there is a wall here. But you just ignore it if you're on the spinner, for whatever reason. As long as you get all the way up the stairs, then you can go. Anyways. But yeah, um, there's a heart in one of these boxes, but it doesn't really lose any time to grab it if you're low. You shouldn't be low because you'll just done the stubby, but anyways. So yeah, what I'm doing here is basically I walked forward fast enough so that I could hit the first flame cycle, and then I... You don't want to roll into this flame jet. I, I, should, I should really stop to explain this, probably. Um, what you're trying to do here is, as long as you're not facing, like, super far right, so if I just walk straight into this thing being close to this left wall, it's not going to throw me into the lava at all. Um, and during the hit stun, I can just roll through the flames. If you roll, then it will hit you into the lava. So you don't want to roll into the flame, you want to walk into the flame. I just want to make that exceedingly clear. You can do the same thing for this one. So you see how he's walking right at the end there. Okay, so this guy's gonna shoot at you. So you, don't wanna, you wanna move out of the way. And then, so I'm targeting above that platform. If you can kind of see. And then when it's above, when the boomerang is above the platform, I can go ahead and go and kind of jump attack up here. Put on iron boots. And take him off and do a little roll. Cutscene. It's a pretty linear and easy dungeon. That was really nice. I'm gonna roll, and then on the second roll, I'm gonna angle pretty far right. Like, after a little bit of time in the roll. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna let me down here really fast. And it's gonna save me probably a cycle on the, um, a cycle or two on the little spinny guys up here. You can technically make it to the middle during that cycle, but it goes for it. You want to equip the Iron Boots for like a little more than a frame there while you're in the air and then unequip them so that you actually land on the thing. <laughs> um, I think if you just try to run, you don't land on the thing. So it's it's just 
kind of annoying because it's something you have to do, generally speaking. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to roll four times and then kind of try to angle such that... So you saw how I was angling that basically um, I was facing kind of like not quite straight towards the back wall. I'm angling like a little more to the left there, essentially, because I want the um, the side up to actually land on the platform. And uh, sometimes I'm worried that if I if I don't like forcefully angle left, then I'll accidentally angle a little right and then land in the lava. So this is worth pointing out. But yeah, I can just walk past here and apparently show this movement again. Um, <laughs> Yeah, this is not hard. I'm just being stupid. I guess I can show this again. But yeah. And have your sword out there. You need to jump spin to kill this guy. Uh, you want to pull this out at least five times. So that you can, like, mess up and have it still kind of work. Well, I don't think we're gonna... Yeah. I have another smile. Um, you'll have to forgive me. Basically, yeah, I wasted time getting hard. But what you're gonna try to do here is you're gonna try to roll kinda straight into the wall, but like enough at an angle so that you get stuck in between the wall and the thing like this. And then you just wanna roll straight forward as much as you can. You kinda angle towards the um the entrance. Now, since I bonked I couldn't quite make it, but um if you're not comfortable with this, it doesn't take that much longer to um, go all the way around the long way after pulling it a few extra times. But yeah. So eventually you get through here if you hold the good angle. I'm not really sure how else to explain it. It's kind of a dumb trick. You can um, pull it probably six times would make it safe to... Um, make it safe to uh, bonk and go. Okay, so once I land on this, I'm going to start holding down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then after the tenth step, I can take off boots and roll twice, and I will not bonk. It's kind of nice. It saves like a few frames, probably. So we have to talk to this guy, otherwise he doesn't let us out of the room. And ignore the Yuku. Um, so right here I'm basically gonna... So I'm gonna turn... Like, after this roll, I'm gonna turn so that I'm walking... Basically... Um, towards that little brown platform. Which apparently I can't show off because I suck. That is what happens if you're dumb like me. Um, it's faster to just roll, and it's really consistent if you're not stupid and pausing in the middle of it to break up your... Like, you have to understand, this is hard for me to do when I'm, like, pausing in the middle of showing what I'm showing. Like, if I do it casually, I can do it just fine. It's really easy. Um, you could theoretically LJ on top of the pipe, though. But yeah, that's how that's supposed to look. You kind of, like, roll, and then... You just want to make sure that... Here, I'll, I'll show what I'm talking about. Um, you don't want to... There's, like, a specific part of the wall. Let's see if I can show it. So you don't want to roll onto the... Um, more upsloped part because then you'll slide and fall into the water instead of like actually jumping off. Like once you get up near that, you want to kind of turn your roll angle so that you land on the platform. But yes, presumably you could walk to the left and then like target above this and then uh, do an LJ. But I don't see the point. It's so fast that it doesn't even matter. Um, so, roll twice. You try to, like, angle and side hop onto that. There's no sword recoil in HD, so this is actually faster to, um, use slashes like this. Um, yeah. So you kind of, like, 
walk around this. Actually, I should pull up the mini map so you can see where I'm going. You can see the path that I'm taking, basically. I'm not. I don't like the mini maps. Um, alright, so let's see. Yeah, this takes forever. Let's <laughs> walk across the ceiling. Um, so, basically, once I get to where I know like I'm above this platform, I can go ahead and go. Just give me another cutscene here. Again, most of Gora Mines is pretty simple, just like and stuff. You wanna either land on the platform, put iron boots, or put iron boots, and then roll across. Roll across. Roll across the switch. I can pull this switch there. You're thinking about sub 4 all the dungeons of the PhD, which is impossible. Okay. Great, good for you thinking about that. Um, alright, so we go on the mag boots and then get across here. And now, basically, what we're gonna do here, or at least what I do, is I swim over to the chest. You can theoretically hit the switch um, before going down to get the small key, but the timing is really tight. So usually, what I do is I just go down to the chest, have the claw shot equipped, and then I like go kind of towards the torches and then do this. And I can just go through. And you can just kind of walk to like the middle here. And as long as you're targeting above the door, you'll go through just fine. You don't have to like walk super far forward for it to work or anything like that. Assuming you're climbing up in the right spot. So something that I'm doing a lot in here is I'm uh, rolling directly after pressing B to do a little sword slash. And that just, it's a nice little way to keep the momentum all the same time. For me to pull out the sword there, other than I just don't want to pick up the box. Okay, and then basically what we can do here... If I can, like, not fail it. Um, is... Uh, LJ above that door, and then you get over here. You just want to stand in the corner so that you make it. It's pretty simple. I think if you throw the ball and chain from here, it triggers the fight. No, I was I was lied to. Or at least you have to roll forward if you want to do that. So what what I normally do here is I just roll straight forward and trigger the fight. And skipping cutscenes is gonna put you up here. Uh, so basically, what I'm gonna want to do here is I'm gonna want to jump down and use iron boots to fall faster, but take them off before I land. Then I'm gonna transform into a wolf. And so for some reason in this game, um, the platform doesn't get paused while you're doing quick transform. Like if you actually just do quick transform, which I can do because I have a master sword. Uh, but the Goron does, he does pause his positioning. So basically what I'm gonna do is by landing the platform is going to start tilting, and it'll tilt while I'm doing the quick transform, and his feet will actually be below the level of the platform. And what that's going to do is he's just going to fall straight through into the lava, which is really funny. Um, anyways. And so pretty much the idea here is to, for the first two cycles, we want to, him to just fall into the lava. The third one, you actually have to throw him in. Um, but you do what you do not want to do is transform while having uh, the boots on. That is a terrible idea. Do not do that. So, so I turn around and then I transform. You'll see he falls into the wall. And I kind of run to the middle. And then I run to the edge again and untransform. And generally that will put him back into the wall. I just want to run to the far edge from where he spawns. And he's going to do this for a little bit. Of the time. So you can do a roll stab or a spin attack there. Just throw him into the lava. Yeah. 
It's a really fast fight if you do that. So. I don't remember, I think it takes like 20 seconds over the normal fight. And it's HD only because of the quick transform feature. It's kind of cool. Anyways, yeah, now we're just gonna basically go get the bow. Alright, so we're gonna hold R so that we can take these off. And then we want to um, press B and roll. And since we're slashing the sword, any A presses will not basically talk to anything. That's the general idea. So we don't talk to him, we can avoid talking to him by just slashing before we roll. We can go ahead and grab the uh, bow and then shoot down this little bridge. Still pretty simple movement. There's like some more complex stuff you can do in here if you don't have the claw shot, but we don't need to. That rope is finicky. Uh, this lava slug is annoying, by the way. So we have to actually get the third key shard, and to do that we have to kill the Bemos, and the Bemos doesn't activate unless you activate the one in the back. Okay, so I want to stand at this, like, not on the edge there, but like next to it. Basically, so that uh, the laser can't hit me, and then I can pull, and it'll hit me after I finish. Um, if you are below 100 rupees and you have like 50, you should grab that chest. It has a 50 in there, and you want to be at 100 leaving, but I have 130, so it's not an issue. Yeah, we basically push this twice again, and then you watch out for the lava slug, because he's still there. There are plenty of people who get hit by that lava slug, and it's just like, my guys, you gotta just remember these there, and it's fine. Um, yeah. So what I can do here is just kind of like do two rolls and then a long jump attack. You actually don't need to um, slash for that first roll that I did there once I was on the platform, because you're far away enough where it doesn't matter. I just did that out of habit. Uh, but anyways, so now getting back, I want to kind of roll to the corner again and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target on that upslope ledge and then do a jump slash to get down and uh, hopefully not have camera be a giant pain in the ass and since I have claw shot I can just skip the mag dead skip entirely I can just kind of go here and then aim at this bottom corner if I like actually go up to the ledge See how I can like actually aim at this. Um, so I don't want to kill all these bacoblins. So basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk like kind of close to these pots and then just shoot the uh, the rope from super far away. That's actually a really generous shot, too. Like, I always find the one after getting the bow to be harder than that shot. And I can just roll all the way over here and it's perfectly fine. Um, and in one of those pots that was right in front of the, uh, the spot where I was standing, I could uh, get arrows if I needed them, but I don't need them, so... And there's arrows in here. Anyways, you just want to aim a little up and shoot in his face right away. That's like the hardest shot in this whole fight. Uh, but then you just put on Iron Man's and it's easy. Um, since we have Master Sword here, a full stab is actually enough to get him to go up immediately. Uh, so we'll do that instead of a jump spin since it's slightly faster. With the Ordon Sword, you do a jump spin though. So basically, I just want to sit here and do this, kind Yeah, I kind of want to be at pretty much full arrows, um, and there are plenty of arrow chests around, so it's kind of nice when you just walk around and grab some, and hearts for that matter. You have plenty of time. So, the roll stab is like actually faster than finishing blowing over him. We're still gonna do a roll stab. You can do a little funny finishing blow where you jump all the way over him. It's kind of just interesting, I guess. Um, so, 
Interesting little tidbit about that fight. The game actually doesn't keep any sort of damage counter on fires like it would for most bosses. It's completely cycle based. You can have him fall down twice, don't hit him at all while he's on the ground, and have him slowly stand up. And then on the, uh, the third cycle, you can do a finishing blow and kill him. It's really funny. I'm not sure why they coded it that way. They just did. Um, yeah. You only actually have to hit him once, technically. <laughs> But yeah. Um, it's far in minds. Again, it's pretty easy. It's a lot easier if you're not like trying to explain the small little movement stuff. That really is easier than I made it look. Uh, but yeah, after this, we're gonna go to City in the Sky. And City in the Sky is basically the exact same. It's just, we have a different way of getting the Silver Ruby. I'm gonna skip the heart container since I have like way too many hearts at this point anyways. But yeah. Oh, there's Goron Mines. So if you're keeping track, we still have City in the Sky, Palace of Twilight, Hyrule Castle, and Temple of Time left. The reason we do Goron Mines right then is because uh, we already have everything we need and it puts us right here so that we can go ahead and do the Silver Rupee. So this is pretty easy. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump slash onto this ledge and then walk up into this little corner that I'm standing on. I'm going to target three times that are like separate spots on the wall, and then I'm going to target twice on that. And then basically when the boomerang gets close to the, um... When it gets close to the, what's it called? The bell, then I go ahead and shoot the arrow. And it's faster than transforming into wolf, especially since it's daytime after Goron Mines. Like, it's not even nighttime at this point. It's both of Snow Peak and Goron Mines set this to, um, day. So you couldn't really do the wolf without scaring Tallow. But anyways, early city in the sky. You just kind of angle. I, I've shown it off in a previous tutorial, so it's pretty easy. So I'm not really going to explain it. But yeah, you just angle a little to the right, and then as soon as you're on, like, both of your feet are on the platform, your head is, like, kind of in that little middle gap. I explained it better in a different tutorial that you can look at, but, um... Then you want to talk to Midda specifically. You can't quick transform. You want to talk to Midda and then uh, transform into Wolf, and you can just jump attack through the gap. I mean, assuming your angle and positioning isn't completely terrible. Yeah, I'm not going to explain this stuff quite as much right now, because I've already explained it in the initial tutorial I made. Um, there's not really anything that's particularly different for all dungeons from, like, the old 80% route for City and Sky. So I'm probably just going to, like, generally show what this looks like. But it's pretty easy. And there's, like, a bunch of LJAs, but they're, like, pretty simple targets. There's nothing crazy. So we're gonna get all the way into the city and sky. And the new piece gonna talk to us, which is always fun. Um, this save has been hacked specifically so that the gate is already down, which is good, so I don't have to like worry about that in the tutorial. <laughs> it's nice. Um, otherwise, I would have had to have loaded a uh, lake bed file. Yeah, the practice saves have all been modified, so basically anything past the lake bed has it so that city has the gate unloaded already. So it's nice. Or, well, I say it's unloaded. It's not, like, actually unloaded, te te technically. I just have the gate pulled down so it simulates the same thing. But yeah. So 
So sometimes this wind blows immediately, which is annoying, but there's nothing you can do about it. I just kind of want to aim at the blue crystal. <clears throat> okay, so what I do here generally is I roll onto this, and then I throw the boomerang so that it hits the wall, theoretically. So that it comes back faster. However, I missed both spots. And you just want to LJA once it's over the void. Um, and so what I'm trying to do there is I, I try to like roll so that I'll be close enough to open the door once I get to the um, Transformer the Wolf. But otherwise I can just like walk forward slowly until I can barely open the door. So this is fine, for example, the fan is off. Anyways. Yeah, I just kind of re-angle, side hop, and then do this. Um, once the edge of the bridge that's popping out is halfway into the, like, angled stairs there, I go ahead and get off the spinner and roll. And that'll give me enough time to roll and it won't pop back in. I'm doing a little LJA above that corner. I usually target twice because, like, I want to make sure I have enough time. Theoretically, you can do one, but I just don't think it's wise. Because if it starts coming back, its angle is going to be, like, so far to the right that it won't work. I'm just kind of keep rolling that way. Um, again, roll three times, walk forward a little, and then clash it up and grab this. And angle a little that way. Walk a little bit. And do a little targeted claw shot. There's not really much to explain there. <laughs> it's just the like, movement that you have to kind of experiment with and figure out how to do, honestly. Um, so if you get the immediate wind here, you can like try to side hop onto this ledge. I'm not very good at this. Um, but theoretically you can get on that ledge and then angle so that you get onto the stairs. Uh, but I'm just gonna claw shut up on the p-hat angle such that my falling jump slash is going to put me in the right spot and I'll avoid the cutscene trigger. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna make it so that um, I don't get the Argonaut cutscene and my save spot doesn't, save point doesn't get reset, which is nice. But yeah, now that I have the key, I can go to the east side. Yeah, what I do there is I, I try to do a little horizontal slash so that I hit the, only the stem, but not the head. So if I do a walking horizontal slash by... By the way, this this uh, bridge works the same way in terms of timing. Um, but I can slice it so that any slash will kill the head if I hit it. So I just kind of time this so that I only have to do two slashes to save a little time. Anyway, so I kind of basically want to... You just want to make sure you don't bonk into the wall here and roll off enough so that the wind doesn't push you off. It's, I, don't know, I don't know how else to explain it. I'm going to roll into the center of this ruby that I'm standing in. I'm going to aim like a little to the right of that. And then I'm going to LGA as soon as possible, basically. And uh, generally that works. Apparently, I aimed slightly too far right. Something about my positioning or the LJ itself is off. But yeah, you want to avoid landing on this. Actually, I'm going to avoid so that I can see if I can actually get this correctly. Um, I mean, if you land on the, the thing, you can just do what I did and, like, sidewalk and then go down, but... Yeah, that's how it's supposed to be. You and you want, uh... Iron Boots to already be equipped here. So that during this cutscene, if you're holding the Iron Boots button, you'll just put them on. Just nice, it saves a little time.
Alright, so I can go ahead and drop down. Now, you can do a roll for a skip, but it's stupid, so... Um, so what I do is I do this. Like, right before he's gonna hit the ground, you want to pull up the other uh, one. I, it's hard to explain that while doing it. Um, I'll explain it after. Basically what you want to do is, um, you can only get four ball and chain hits before, like, any other hit is going to cause them to fly back up and start second phase. Um, but... Essentially, if he's attacking you and you hit his shield, that counts as the same damage. And so what you want to do is you want to get a total of nine ball and chain hits will kill. Or, so essentially you can't kill while you're hitting his shield, right? So if you hit him directly with a ball and chain, or if the ball and chain is coming back, then it'll deal like one ball and chain damage, I think. Yeah, that should be correct. Um, and what that'll do is it'll... Um, It'll actually check the damage to see... It'll check the um, the second threshold first to see if he's dead. And then after that, it, if he's still alive, it'll put him into second phase because it'll be above the other threshold. But since he dies, he doesn't ever go into second phase. Um, and so essentially... Basically, you just need to know how to count. If you, if you do it correctly, you're going to get the four, first four hits immediately like when pulling him down, and then you just want to make sure that you don't hit him when, like, and not hit the shield, but hit him directly with a ball and chain until you get another four ball and chain hits. Um, and if you get five before he flies back up, then you can pull him down and do a stab, but if you only get four, then you can just uh, do a ball and chain swing like you did the, at the beginning, and it'll kill. Um, but usually you can get it I mean, if you're not, like, super unlucky, you'll be able to do that perfectly fine within two cycles. If you're really good at it, you can do it in one cycle, but I'm obviously not really good at it while trying to explain things. Yeah, I suck at explaining things and doing it at the same time. Anyways, uh, since we're already having this open and we're going to Palace of Twilight next, I go ahead and, um... Equip Zora Armory here, because otherwise we'd have to equip it later. It's faster to do it while we're doing the save work. So yeah. We can go and save warp here, and this is going to put us back at where we got the small key from. Side up under the chest twice, and then do key jump attacks. Pretty easy movement as long as you don't keep holding right after the second side up. It's not not anything crazy. But if you mess up your position, you kind of have to like start over and just do like probably some claw shot back at that point. But yeah, the cutscene trigger is gone now, so we can just over it freely. Let me just cross up to the top of this. Again, this is the same as any percent stone. Do we just want to clash out up here? And then we're gonna roll to this little dot in the ground in the texture. So like I'm standing with my feet straddled across it, and then I I can just aim up into the corner and it'll work pretty much every time. Uh, you can aim above this, but I wouldn't recommend it. What I usually want to do is aim like, okay, see, see where this corner is? You just go left from that, and you should be targeting above the door. And then you can LJ across because it'll be above the door. Uh, aiming up is like a little shaky. Like if you try to aim above the thing rather than targeting. It generally seems to be more consistent to do that. But yeah, what I'm gonna try to do here is, okay, so you see the ledge that I'm grabbing from? 
I'm going to be facing towards the door that I want to exit from. And basically I target and then I want to roll such that I uh, don't land on the fan and have to like grab the, uh, the what's it called, the ledge. I try to jump off like a little early basically so that I don't grab the ledge and have to drop back down. And then it'll save me from taking damage from the fall and it'll allow me to roll directly whenever I land. It's really nice, it saves like a bit of time. And it looks really cool, so. Yeah, I just, so what I'm doing here is basically I'm, um, claw shotting to the very top. Okay, so how this works is essentially, if you're claw shotting onto the very top of something while being, while the claw shot is, like, angled down, right? So I'm above where, like, I aim really high on the first claw shot, so that I can basically be above where I need to claw shot to on the second claw shot, right? And then I climb up and do the same thing for the third one. Um, anyways, and that, that'll let me climb up onto the things. Um, and essentially what's up on this one, I can just go all the way to the right here, and then I'm gonna do two targets with, to do an, a double LJ, like one set of one target and then one set of two targets, which I'll show now. Around there. Basically, you just want to aim at the edge of the hole, pretty much. There's like a tiny middle in the NCU, but you just need to be careful about it. And you just uh, do LJAs pretty much as soon as you can on both of them. There's not really any timing involved on that at all. It's pretty easy. It's just that I get shaky during speedruns, so like often on good runs I'll mess up. Even though know, it's easy. It's the because the initial targets are kind of precise, and it's annoying to do with gyroscope if you're shaking. So, anyways. It's not a hard grab. You can you can uh, aim further up and left to make that less scary. Yeah, we want to get on this. That we can grab this side here, and this is just a bit of timing. But yeah. So doing all that, we can get up here and hit this early. Um, if you're not fast on that last claw shot, you have to drop down and go around and then get on the next one and waste about 10 seconds. Um, so what I'm doing here, by the way, to get the claw shot to come out early is I'm holding ZL whenever I get onto something, and then pressing X and holding that, and then letting go of ZL, and that'll have me have it already out. Okay, so what I want to do here is, is basically, so what I do here is I, I try to roll twice, and then get, okay, so you see how I'm, like, kind of lined up, like, around here-ish? I want to walk up to the edge, but not, like, all the way off, and then I can kind of angle up here, just automatically. This is at the top of the gyroscope thing, and it makes it so that I can get a pretty easy rub shot. Just a small little thing. So yeah, I want to stand next to this pillar, uh, because that'll make it so that Argarok won't like try to go across the ground, he'll just try to attack me immediately. And then I'm going to target this. You can aim directly, like, kind of anywhere in its vicinity and you'll be able to grab, but it's a little risky, I find. Because like, sometimes you'll be cool game where you'll get stuck on your tail that won't actually bring down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to target really quickly up on this right pole, up near that line right there, and then target to grab. Yeah, we just do that and then the first place is already on. Pretty simple. It's nothing crazy, so... Anyways. Um... Yeah. If you get hit by the fire while having your armor on, just FYI, you die. So it's probably worth noting. But not terrible. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hold R so that out of this cutscene I take out my beast immediately. And then I'm going to start uh, just rolling forward to the edge and uh, jump off. 
The reason being because if I get off the ledge of Void fast enough, um, essentially, instead of flying around, Argarok is just going to stay in place when I respawn. So that's why we do this. Um, and then I can just go ahead and go over here. Set up my boots and claw shot up. I want to claw shot above. Like way above where I just claw shot it here. That was dumb. We're going to do this backwards. I can still this part. Yeah, okay, so that was totally ad lib, so don't do it that way. I'll show how to do the, the, uh, the first two cycles correctly the second time. That was a very, very bad thing. Um, that was completely out of left field. You kind of want to wait for the clouds to start moving before you flash that back up, because you can go too early. But anyways, yeah, you want to get this up here on the second claw shot, and then as soon as she screams, you want to claw shot with the iron boots on. And once the flame is over you, you'll be low enough so that he'll stop turning, and then you just claw shot three more times to get around to his back, and then claw shot his back. And that's the same for the first and second cycle. I just stupid the first time. And then the third one you have to do it differently. So you want to take off your boots. And then you immediately do four claw shots. And then he's going to start turning around after he passes this guy. So essentially, you just, once he passes that P hat, you put on your boots. And then you take them off once he starts spinning fire. And you put on his boots back. It's pretty easy. I'm pretty sure my initial tutorial does a better job explaining that on a different thing for reference. So, that still exists. Like I said, this is the exact same as 80%, so anything I said in the initial 80% tutorial, like, none of the strats have really updated. It's the exact same thing, so if I explain it better than the initial tutorial, it's probably it would just be good to look at that. I'm just going through it because I, I want to do this all in one long forum session. Um, yeah. So, since this is all dungeons, I already have plenty, like, I'll have seven hearts here, generally, so I don't tend to grab the heart container here because I will usually be at full health exiting this end fight. And seven hearts is generally enough for a temple of time. But if you're worried it's not enough, this is a pretty fast heart container to grab. You can just do a little analog glitch side hop like I'm holding right now. You just do that out at the end of the cutscene and you grab it pretty fast. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that because I don't really need it. Like in any percent, we do the same sort of thing for a while. We're gonna do a little side hop in the boots, and then skip the cutscene, and slash immediately, and since we have boots on, we're gonna land on the bridge. We wanna be spamming beings. Um, and then we can immediately teleport to Palace. Now you can, theoretically, do Temple of Time before Palace. It's like pretty much exactly the same timing. I just find it easier to do palace first, and it lines up better with like heart routing. Um, and being able to kill the shadow beast like a little bit easier before entering Tibble. Don't bonk there that many times. Um, but you know, I mean, there's like some difference of opinion on which one to do first. It's not like a huge deal. But if you want to compare to me, I always do I always do Palace of Twilight first. Like, there's nothing good you get out of doing Temple of Time before Palace, since Dominion Rod is not going to be fixed and is completely useless in Palace to begin with. So... Whatever.
Also, you don't need a ton of health entering here. Like, there's a pretty fast ferry you can grab in Temple of Time, but I don't see the point. You'll usually be at like five hertz or like six hertz here. Uh, anyways, you just run down to this guy. So these phantoms have heads, one more wolf. Basically, we want to do to kill them. Is we're gonna target them while having dash, but not. We don't want to like jump attack at them. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and claw shot the gun around and transform the wolf. Um, and uh. So essentially, we do a little running B attack, is basically what I like to call it. A running targeted B attack, and that'll hit him twice, and then you can do a minute charge and it'll kill. Um, it's the fastest way to deal with these heads. So you see what I do here. Again, while you have running motion, you do the, uh, the B attack, and then you do a minute charge. And then you basically just try to get to as close to this chest as possible in this specific case. Um, and then this little plat- this floor is low enough where we can just jump attack up this chest and then jump attack up on the ledge. And also side off up the chest, but it's easier probably to do the, uh, the jump attack just three times. It's at least what I do. Um, Okay, so Phantom Zant fights, there's a couple ways to do them. I'm gonna try to show the fastest way here, see if I can get it. And then we'll show the more consistent way the second time. Do you wanna stab and then do two quick spins? And then on the third one you do. A stab and then and that'll kill. Um, but yeah, so that's harder because you have to be good at targeted quick spins. Uh, but you know, if you're good at them, it's fine. If you're not good at them, then I would recommend doing the four cycle, which I. Don't know, I Basically, if you mess up the final spin attack in this, then he starts warping around, and there's not really any chance for him to start doing any type of that stuff on the, uh, the, the four cycle if you already know that you're probably not going to get the three cycle. And then you don't waste time doing, like, slow spin attacks. Because the reason that the three cycle saves time is because it's a three cycle, not a four cycle, but the actual attacks you're doing are slower. Like, each cycle is slower, it's just there's fewer cycles. Anyways, yeah, so I'm just gonna go up here, and then I'm gonna walk to this corner. And I'm gonna try to aim towards the middle here as much as I can. So that it lands on the thing. This is something you have to work with. I don't know exactly how to, like, explain all of the little bit of things in Palace. There just are a bunch of them. Go ahead and aim down and grab this. I'm gonna walk around the edge here so that these guys don't hit me. Uh, if I could L-slide, then they wouldn't even spawn, but you can't L-slide in HD, so... Uh, but once again, I probably explained this stuff better in my initial any percent tutorial, because this is literally the exact same as it would be in any percent for this dungeon. Except I have more hearts than I would have in any percent, probably. So, anyways. Yeah, that's, that's West Half. West Half is easy. Not much to explain there, it's just like grabbing a soul and then coming back. I don't even think we do any LJs or anything. Like, the craziest thing we do is the uh, the jump attack up the chest, which is very tame. Uh, the east side is dumb. If you roll onto this platform, then you can LJ immediately. But I can't usually get there, so... so. Anyways, what I try to do here... Is aim a little left, but not like too far left, so that whenever the boomerang is on the way back, I can do a little LJ over uh, if I'm standing near the edge. <laughs> I probably didn't save any time doing that because I had to climb back up the ledge, but you get the idea. So here I just roll forward, walk forward a, like a little bit, and then claw shut up as fast as I can. Wait like a tiny amount of time, then drop down, pull out the sword once I land. I'm the 
which, damn it, I could have gotten that. Unfortunately, this ant had spawned in this stupid spot. I'm just gonna wait this one out. So you can kill these guys with either two quick spins or a, um, a jump attack quick spin. And I'll probably, like, actually explain how this, how the mechanics of this room work, um, since I can. So basically how this works is, um, the reason I wait for the, uh, platform to start moving back before I jump forward is because the platforms will line up nicer that way, um, so that generally I'll be able to kill him. I think he has a uniform chance of spawning either here where I'm standing, here, um, in between these two platforms, in between the next two platforms, and then in between the final two platforms there. If he spawns basically in the very front spot, or either of these two backside spots, it's perfectly fine because he'll basically never hit you if you're moving fast, um, and you'll be able to get to him and do a jump slash quick spin to kill if he's here or here, and then you can just do two quick spins to kill over there. If he's in any of these three middle spots, though, it's really dumb, because there's a very high chance he'll hit you out of midair. Um, and so I was good enough to dodge it, but then I fell off the platform and had to, like, climb back up slowly after getting it. So, anyways. <laughs> this is why this room is dumb, is because okay, the spot that he spawns is random, and there's a decent chance you lose time just because he does something dumb. And if he spawns on like one of the bad spots, you can always try to get him, but uh, there's a good chance that you'll fall. So sometimes it's not worth trying, in my opinion. Anyways, two running B attacks in a charge. Excuse me? Really? I've never seen that happen before. Anyways, as this guy's dying, I'm gonna try to clock that up here. Yeah, I think my any percent tutorial, the first one I did, probably showed that off better, um, how that really is supposed to look, but... But yeah, we, need, we just need the small key. Go ahead and flush it over here and then roll directly downward into it. So you see how I'm standing in this little square here? Rolling directly downward from the chest will put you in this spot every time. Then you want to target like left of this uh, diagonal section. I was about to say curved, but it's not curved. It's just slanted. And then basically, once this boomerang is out of bounds, I can do a little OJ. There's another way of getting over there where. Um, like, do a little claw shot around the wall, uh, but I just prefer doing that. Well, thank you, Magnus. Um, okay, so this one I'm gonna show off the, um, the more consistent strat. Basically, I'm gonna do a four cycle, and so what you do here is you do... Oh, you spawn. Okay. You do, uh, three sets of three stabs. And then one full combo with stabs. And that was just enough damage to kill him. And like I said, the, the stabs are faster than doing the quick spins, it's just that it takes extra cycle. Like an extra cycle, so. Um, I usually go for the three cycle, and then if it fails, I, I just. Like if I fail anything but the last um, quick spin, I can just change it into essentially doing the same thing as the 4 cycle. And I'll just go from there. Um, but if you fail the last one, he just starts warping around. Maybe you do a slash instead of a going blow. Okay, once I pass that slot, I drop with the B button. Drop the, uh, the saw. And then I can roll directly onto the platform. You can also throw the saw into the platform and then like roll around the sides, but I don't know. I just like that way. That's the way that uh, Adam does it in SV. So I basically stole that from him. Uh, this is like way easier than the 
west wing road here. You just kind of like want to walk half, not quite halfway into this little square rank and then throw it forward. And then if you're far back enough, you can roll uh, left before the cutscene starts. It's kind of nice. I might sneeze in a second here. Uh, I think we're fine. Good. Um, this is pretty easy. Basically, you just want to wait here, and then once this gets close enough, you can jump diagonally onto it, and then just walk across the knees. And I usually throw my boomerang to try to kill these keys, but I didn't get either of them. Make sure you don't press A while the boomerang is out, otherwise you do a jump attack. If you do a jump attack on this platform, like, if your feet ever leave that platform, it goes away. So, just something to be aware of. I would not recommend accidentally jump attacking. Uh, but here we're gonna do a little buffered throw. This is like a little bit faster. I'm gonna roll three times of this and then grab it from uh, here. The reason that's faster on this side but not on the, um, the, the west side is because we have to like waste time not rolling and just having a platform rise up, so. Anyways, that gets us the light sword. I didn't really explain some of my timing cues very well for um, a lot of this stuff, but... Anyways... You can kind of glean it from watching it back. Or just watching any of my runs, honestly. Like how I usually use visual cues to time that. My special probably shows it too, honestly. Yeah, we just roll up here, do a little quick spin to get rid of the waterfall, and then roll over here. Now, the fastest way to do this room is a little hard. Basically, what I'm going to try to do is do four rolls. And then do, like, a slash, and then a roll. I did two slashes and then a roll, but whatever. And then I just kind of want to throw these into the right spots. This is kind of hard to do, like, aiming quickly on the fly like this, but... It's possible. Also, I need to grab hearts somehow. I've taken like way more damage than I should have been at this point. Now this bat is gonna give me a heart, which is nice. Um, I think I'll get hearts from here. So I do a little quick LJ for the boomerang to go out of bounds so that I can get over here faster. And I do a jump slash quick spin. Directly after that. No hearts, really? Okay, well, I need a heart from something. Otherwise, I'm gonna die. Can I not? The thing. Uh, I don't have any potions. Well, we'll see what happens. Um, so, I'm targeting in this little square and then this black square. And then once the boomerang is out of bounds and to the right of the door specifically, I LJ, and it works pretty much every time as long as you don't have jump strike messing up your timing. But people say it's inconsistent, I've never found that to be the case, honestly. But yeah. Um, so basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna roll directly over to here and do a little target spin. Normally you don't have this little health here. I've just gotten hit by like way too many things. Way more things than normal. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna kinda try to target down this way. And as soon as it goes out of bounds, hey LJ. I would not recommend anybody who's just starting out to do that though. And then I can wait here. Okay, as long as I don't get hit here. I should be fine. Can I do a spin? Anyways, if you don't suck and you're like actually fast at this, you can save a little time by getting half a cycle early. Uh, there is a slightly faster way to do this room, but it's difficult, so I never do it. Um, 
I don't think I'll bother showing it off. I think my initial tutorial might have shown it off, so... Yeah, I'm gonna take half a heart to land in here. You can also do a jump spin into that spot there. Yeah. So I kind of like try to stand with my feet at the edge of that front line of this little raised portion um, when I do spin attack. And if I'm facing the right direction, I'll spin attack automatically when the cutscene starts and it'll put me right in front of the chest. Uh, but if a bird gets close by, I can slash it away doing that too. So that's generally what I'm trying to do there. All right, so I'm gonna talk to Midna as soon as these little things fall down, and then as soon as they're gonna fall, I'm gonna try to uh, do a jump spin. Then I do a jump spin into this water, and then I'm gonna one, three, five. I'm gonna count five. Count to four. Okay. And then once this starts moving horizontally, you want to start to count to six. One. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. So yeah, basically on eight and a half, you can let go of the boomerang. On six is when, if you have the timing right, you should be able to aim at the other uh, spot. It's kind of hard to do that while explaining it, um, but yeah. If you're fast, then basically you can uh, look down. I, I was a little slow there because I was like trying to slow down to explain it somewhat. Um, but basically what I was... Uh, what I would have been able to do if I hadn't been explaining and done everything very quickly is I would have been able to just slowly lower myself onto the platform, which is really nice. But anyways, here you want to kind of aim at this corner. And then you just want to make sure that the platform is basically level with the spot that you're landing on before you do the LJ. You just don't want to go, like, too too or like... Okay, so you want to spin as soon as you hear the uh, previous one, like, poof out of existence. So I was a little early there, as you can tell. As soon as you hear the last one poof away, you want to let go of the, uh, the spin. And presumably, if you get the timing just right, then you'll hit all of them in one frame. And it'll save you a lot of hit lag. Unfortunately, I failed pretty much all of those pretty badly, but it's fine. I mean, it's just like another extra quick spin each time, so. Yeah, so we already have the Zora armor on, so this is going to be nice. We can just roll straight into this cutscene. We're going to see if I can get a tutorial that actually gets the uh, Goron Lions phase 1 cycle. That would be nice. Okay. So the Zant fight, there's like a lot of little cool small time saving strats. For example, in this first phase, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim at where he's gonna spawn. And then when he's about to spawn, I'm gonna go ahead and throw. And I can start a little stab combo while he's uh, bouncing back, which also saves a good amount of time, because you just need the last hit on him. Twice. So here, what I'm going to want to do... Okay, so I'm going to get hit while I'm walking over to him. And that's going to put me in, into hit stun, kind of. Um, but it'll make me invincible, so I'll be able to... Um, do a little jump attack quick spin. And then I'm going to immediately start a stab combo. And I'm gonna, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two stabs, and then I'm going to hold. 
the B button until basically Link's arm is pretty much fully extended to the left. And then I'm going to let go and then I'm going to hold forward and press B as fast as I can. I was about a frame leap there, but that's how it looks. And if you get the timing just right, then um, you'll be able to skip this whole cycle. Otherwise, you just do another jump slash quick spin and do him. Which I unfortunately had to do, but it's not that bad. So here I'm gonna go ahead and put boots on and then just target roll three times. This will put me in a good spot. Okay, and as soon as this thing pops up, I can go ahead and grab him. Now I'm gonna right, left, up, down. That's the fastest underwater combo, as far as I know. It's either that or left, right, up, down. I'm pretty sure it's right, left, up, down, though. So. Watch this pot drop. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna stand. Okay, so you see how I'm at the edge of this little raised portion? I wanna stand about here. So, like, okay, so I want to be directly across this circle from the far Zant head. And then I wanna be standing right at the edge of this little lip. And as soon as his eyes are all the way out of the ground, I take off Iron Boots and start swimming over. If I do it right, which I didn't because I'm an idiot trying to explain it, um, then I can see up, which I wasn't able to do because I was an idiot, and uh, I can grab him immediately. But I suck. But basically, that's just a way of manipulating where he's just spawn. So here, I'm just gonna always hit him on this pole. And I ball and chain equipped so that I can start swinging it immediately at this. Press B to get out of the bond chain and sort of a stab combo. You'll see I'm doing a lot of um, stab, 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 pull back when I can. And that's because that's the fastest combo. Stab combo is a little slower. Okay, as soon as he yells, I want to press B. And I'm facing his leg. Okay, so after he hops the seventh time, once he's in like the height of the, the next jump after that, basically, you can start hitting him. Okay, we'll show that again. So you see when I hit him there, that was the earliest I could hit him. And so since I was sliding away, I did a full stab combo rather than pulling back because it'll save me like a little time. Okay, so here I want to hold seal and forward. As soon as the posts hit the ground, I want to start the, the staff combo. Turn around, immediately start another combo, and then Z-target for the last one. And I want to face away from him. And then target pretty much before the last combo. And that's how you do the last phase. Explained really quickly. I mean, that was a really bad Zant fight, but anyways, whatever. Given that I was explaining, it's not, like, completely awful. But yeah, like I said, there's a lot of parts that you can get for free in Snow Peak Phase, so generally speaking, I'll be at full health, um, exiting with seven hearts here during all dungeons. And so in any percent after being... House Twilight, you would go to Hyrule Castle, but we're not gonna do that. We're actually gonna go beat the last dungeon that we have to beat first. <gasps> Which in this case happens to be Temple of Time. So we're gonna warp the more far in the woods. So basically what we can do here is um, a little thing called the Golden Cocoa Skip. And because I want to show it probably multiple times, just to make sure it's obvious what I'm doing, um, we're going to talk to Aru. Or not Aru, uh, Russell. Or is the other guy. So you see we can, without entering the cutscene, we can actually target him and talk to him. And if I talk to him once, this trigger's actually gone forever until I like 
go back to title screen or something. So I can just walk freely wherever the hell I want. Uh, you don't have to talk to him in a run. You just need to, like, walk to here, which is fine, because it's not in the trigger. I believe the trigger is pretty much the line here. So just don't walk past that line. So if you walk to, like, in this spot, this is where you start to think from. What I want to do is I want to aim... Okay, so you see this tree root? I want to aim a little to the right of it. And then just, like, immediately I'll do it as soon as I can. And then I keep that target. I walk to the right and forward a little. And then this little part right here is slippery, so I jump attack over it, and then I do a roll, and then I want to walk. So basically, you see how my feet are right next to this this root here, and I'm on the edge? I want to aim, like, a little to the right of this ledge right here. And then once it passes by the log, I can go immediately back. And then I can just roll up and, like, aim right about here. And LJ as quickly as possible, and pretty much always put me on that. I want to target a couple times above this thing. That'll let me LJ over here. And then I actually want to walk forward here to break the camera. So that I can go ahead and aim up. And then I just kind of aim haphazardly. And then for these, I just want to go as soon as I can, pretty much. You just want to make it so that when it's coming back, it won't be hitting the, um... You won't be hitting the log. Like I said, since I talked to Aru, the cutscene here is not actually going to trigger, so I can do this as many times as I want if I void. Um, this saves like 30 seconds, I think, over getting Golden Kaku and like doing the cutscene. It's actually faster, if you want to do the cutscene, by the way, it is faster to just talk to him once from far away like that, and then just start talking to him. You skip a lot of the cutscene, um, so... It, like, makes this only save, I think, like, 20 seconds in the end or something like that. Maybe a little less than that to do Golden Kako Skip, but it does save some time. So if you can do it, you should go for it. But anyways. I mean, presumably don't completely fail. Like I said, I'm gonna walk to this little triangle here. Aim to the right of the tree. Keep the angle, roll... Left at that thing. Get that target above the thing. And that'll get you an LJ. Break the target by walking, walk up to the edge. And then, okay, so, so you'll see I want to be aiming about there. So I can go immediately here. I just have to make sure that I'm not going to hit the logs. That's just something you get a feel for. I'm gonna do it one more time to see if I can do it fast. But, we'll see. I don't think we're gonna get, like, the cycles you would normally get. Just because I'm not immediately going for it. So you can see there I was, like, a little late on the LJA. You wanna be, like, pretty good at getting fast LJAs if you wanna do this particular setup. Uh, there are alternate setups for this. This is just, I think, the easiest one. It's slightly slower than the different method. Like, you can skip turning this back if you want to. It's just really hard. And it doesn't really save that much time. Yeah, you don't want to aim that far right either, because then you're gonna boy with falling off there. Anyways, but yeah, as soon as you do that, you want to turn into a wolf. Hey, purple. Yeah, I mean, it's not that hard, honestly. I've just practiced it a ton, though. Uh, but yeah, you want to turn wolf because you can do this as human and it's a little bit faster. The problem is that you have to be really good at aiming with your arrows, and also there's a chance it'll just, like, mess up depending on, like, what setup you use to shoot him here. Like, if you shoot him from the very corner where it's easy to aim at him, then, uh, the game gets confused as to, like, which of these, uh, doorways you've passed through. So it'll do some weird stuff that ends up losing time. Yeah, 
Alright, you just want to follow this path that I'm going on. Okay, so there's a chest here between these torches that has 30 bombs in it, if you want it. Um, but usually, I have plenty of, uh, plenty of bombs here. You just want to shoot this guy. The host coral. All right. Um. But yeah. Oh, that was a nice arrow drop. But yeah. At this point, I just want to stay human. Okay. So yeah, if you shot the uh, the guy with the arrows earlier, then what would basically happen here is instead of being able to go through this door to the left, you'd have to go like back through the previous room. Which is dumb. And it would waste time, so I just always enter as wolf and do it the way I do it. But, I mean, theoretically, you can make the other way faster if you figure out what's wrong with the, uh, the current setup. And you just keep rolling through here. And he's gonna be up in a tree, and you just kinda wanna shoot up towards him. Yeah, if they crowd you, you can kinda just kill them, and then just aim haphazardly towards them. Is that a cursor? It's an eye tracker. So, they, like, where I'm looking at on screen. I mean, I know this game so well that I don't even look at good spots anymore. Like, half the time I'm just not looking at the screen, but, uh, you know. Just a general idea of what you might want to look at, I guess, is the idea. Yeah, you just. If you do this normally, he's gonna spawn in this middle spot, and then this side spot to the right, and then in the very back. Sometimes, you'll be followed by a, a uh, puppet in here, and then he'll always hit you immediately at the start of these. There's not really anything you can do about it. Um, but the, all the other ones should die. It's just the one that's close to you will sometimes just hit you every time, which wastes a little time. It's more annoying if he actually gets in the way of your shot. I got kind of lucky there. But anyways. Anyways. But yeah, once you do all that, you can go ahead and go here. There's going to be a cutscene that you can skip immediately after you get the fourth push. Which causes some funny moments like so. Now, ideally, you also would have um, equipped torch during that. Or not torch, lantern. I don't like the camera changes directions during the cutscene. It doesn't change for like after the cutscene. Okay, so since I did Palace of Twilight already, I actually have Overworld Light Sword, which is really nice. So pretty much what I can do here is I just have to kill the last guy with the spin attack. What I generally do is I roll the left, do a normal slash, pull the light, do a normal slash, then slash the other guy, and then really push these guys. And it's really easy. Um, if you do Temple of Time first, you need to roll stab the first two guys, which can cause some issues, so... I just much prefer being able to do, like, a running slash or whatever. So, anyways. But yeah, now I can just enter Temple of Time. What am I doing? I'm doing an, an all dungeons sort of tutorial for, like, the part of the route that I never made a tutorial for. The good thing about Temple of Time is that there's not many tricks you have to learn. The bad thing about Temple of Time is that means that movement can, you know, save or lose you several minutes if you suck at it. So just FYI. Oh yeah, I haven't changed my title. Which is dumb, but that's fine. I'm just too lazy. Yeah, so the camera's gonna be weird here, but you just want to kind of side off onto this ledge, get the minute text, and then use this pot that's close by to put down the switch. Yeah, you can equip stuff while climbing these ledges too, which is kind of nice. 
Okay, there is a way to skip that Uku, but I am not qualified to show how to do it because I actually don't really fucking know. Alright, see you, Coral. So I want um, the spinner equipped for later. Anyways. I just always grab the Uku because I suck at the skip. But you can LJA past this trigger and then do it again on the way back. It's just dumb. And also it messes with the clips kind of. So I just don't usually. Um, okay, if this spider ignores you, you can immediately go to this. So what I'm gonna do here is once I'm up here, I'm gonna press A and then like B immediately after it. <laughs> Uh, you have to practice it. <laughs> it it's like, um, you just want to be, you want to claw shot the front edge of the claw shot target, basically. Right? And then, um, essentially, as soon as you drop, you want to press B. What's up, Charlotte? Um, and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and equip bomb arrows to kill these guys whenever they hit Does one of those guys not die? Excuse me. I'm gonna kill this guy since he's being rude. Um, but <laughs> ideally they all attack you at the same time. So, so yeah, see, you, you see I, I had bad time there. What you want to do, generally speaking, is you want to target... You want to get up here and then like wait a couple frames and then let go and press B. If you go, like, immediately, then it's harder. Oh, Adi, okay. What's up? Wait, there's no pets in here. What am I talking about? Yeah, I'm attempting to make a really bad old Dungeons tutorial. Because I'm bored. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this down on the, uh, the little thing, and then I'm going to try to time a side hop so it's in the cutscene. And then I do a little analog glitch side hop there. And you just want to, like, kind of hit the back of those guys, or, like, the, um the ground right behind him. Either one of them will generally work. Um, and that'll just kill those guys and climb up here and get the chest immediately. Now there's... I don't remember why I normally grab these arrows. Uh, but there's arrows in that chest that are nice to grab. I don't... I don't... Actually, I haven't done all dungeons in so long that I actually don't remember when I normally get those. I presume it's after I kill the Armos, because there's like a bit of extra time to spare, generally. But, I don't know. Point is, you generally want to grab those, because you're going to be lower on arrows. You want to do a walking slash and roll here, but it's kind of annoying. Does what have to be cutscene only? You can just claw shot through here, really easy. Okay, these Dine Alphas are annoying, so I hope nobody minds if I kill them. So I have bombers equipped here, which is nice, because it makes it so that I don't have to aim perfectly at the, uh, the crystal switch. You can do this with normal arrows, if you don't want to kill the Dine Alphas, but if you want to kill the Dine Alphas, I would just suggest having these already here. Yeah, all of these guys are going to follow me into the next room, and then I can just kill these guys like I was trying to kill the other guys. And then, little known fact, you can use CR to switch between, um, well, I bet a lot of people know that, but not everybody knows that you can use, um, what's it called, the switch between the, uh, bomb arrows and normal arrows. But yeah, you can just shoot through the fence, which is kind of nice, as long as it's not a bomb arrow. Okay, so there's going to be two cutscenes here. You either... Um, hang on, I'm going to go ahead and equip the claw shots into the right thing. But basically, whenever you get near the uh, the scales, 
there'll be a cutscene that plays, and then whenever the scales move for the first time after that one cutscene is played, there'll be another cutscene that plays. So generally during one of the cutscenes, you want to be picking up this statue, but it doesn't really matter. So yeah, see, see there's another cutscene. Um, so basically, what I want to do is I want to stand like around here, and then do a side hop, and then it'll put me right on the edge. And then I can just claw shut up here. Uh, but yeah, you do have to have the... To, to answer your purple question, you have to have the, uh, the cutscene, um, to have that little side hop work. But I'm gonna immediately shoot a... Are you serious? Are you serious? That, like, works. 100% of the time, I swear to god. I have never had that fail. Anyways. Now this is a giant cluster. Gotta come over here. I definitely let go of the fucking thing. Uh, point is that was a really shitty room. Can I even grab this? I can't. I can't really reshow the room, but I'll try to explain what I was trying to do there in a second. Even though we don't have the Dominion Rod, we can use the Helmosaur uh, armor to basically put down these switches. We can cut a roll, hang off, and then drop down. Um, Alright, so basically what I was trying to do there is... I'll like go back and emulate what the motions would look like. Generally when you come straight through here, you're facing the right direction and you're in the right position where if you just shoot a bomb arrow, it'll hit the guy and kill him. But for some reason, there's like a couple frames on HD where Gyro can like mess up your aiming and be fucking stupid. So I like barely managed to miss somehow. But normally, what I would do is I would shoot that guy and then I would roll forward and then I would claw shot this guy and then I would basically. What I do is I basically turn around and then press B so that the uh, the armor goes this way. I do the same thing for the other guy, press B so that it goes back this way as well. And then I spin attack both of them, claw shot up here, right? And then I grab these from the ground, put them on the front switches, and then grab the back things and put them on the top switches, so... <laughs> Again, it's just movement, so it's like there's nothing super complicated. But, yeah. Also, Hundo is really throwing me off right now. I keep almost doing Hundo things. <laughs> So ideally we're gonna be able to kill all these guys with one bomb arrow. I highly doubt that's gonna actually happen. Wow. That like never happens. Anyways. At this point we just wanna dodge these guys and get back here. You wanna like right out of the cutscene you wanna be able to kill the boomerang, so you do a little LJ off the stairs there. It's kinda nice, saves a little time. So yeah, you kill those guys by shooting the wall behind them and grab some health and um, arrows here as well, which is kind of nice. Let's see if I can get the, uh, the strat that I want to show here. This is another one of those cases where you have like a frame where a gyroscope can mess up your aim. But you can shoot this guy with the bomb arrow that triggers cutscene really fast. Yeah, there you go. Now, if you have your timing just right, you can get that last slash. And you can do that in either phase. You just need, like, one more slash than in normal dark knots. You have to kind of time one of them correctly. But I'm gonna do a jump attack since I'm already facing the correct direction. And I'm gonna turn around and pull out ball and chain. And then I, I generally have more success if I aim upwards after pulling it out the first time. But I'm not sure if you really need to bother at that point. Anyways. That's another one of the uh, Draconis strats that I stole. Um, it's really nice, so... I'm a little lower in health here than I would like to be, but... It's fine. 
Okay, so statue movement is like one of the things that you really need to practice if you're gonna do all dungeons, because there's like a lot of just small movement optimizations that I probably won't explain in like too much detail, but that are nice. Basically, you just need to figure out how to space this guy so that he's in the right spot where you want him to be pretty much at all times. So there's gonna be a lot of, um, just like random things that look random but are for spacing pretty much that I'm doing here. I'm like stepping on switches, for example, uh, after, okay, so like, you'll be able to see one of them in a second here. So generally I try to dodge those things, but all the outer ones were right here, so it didn't work very well. But yeah, I can go ahead and put him on this platform, and then just kind of back walk onto the switch here. It's probably the easiest way. And just roll him onto the platform. I just want to make sure I'm not about to get hit. Yeah, you can destroy those things, but it's slow. Generally, it's faster, unless you get hit like five times to not even bother killing them. Okay, so pretty much what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to line him up so that he is to my left, and then I just side hop across here. And that way, the as long as I'm side hopping fast enough, um, the scales will never drop. Now, there are like a couple things that can mess that up, which I guess we'll talk about. So basically the thought process behind it, so you can do a, either a back hop, which I find to be harder, um, where the statue's behind you. It's harder to get the angle though, and it's harder to get the positioning, and it's just kind of dumb. But Hundo has to do that because it has back slice, so it's worth knowing, I guess. Um, but basically the idea is essentially that as long as you and the statue are on the same platform, the scale shouldn't drop if you're like side hopping really quickly, right? Um, and basically, I have it in front of me so that generally speaking, we're gonna end up on the scale at the same time. So it's near me, but it's also in front of me, like to, to my left, so in front of me in the direction that I'm traveling side hopping. Um, and the reason for that is because if it was on my right side and I was side hopping left, for example, then there's a very high probability that I end up off the scale, but it's still on the scale, <laughs> which is really bad. You don't want that to happen. So yeah, because um, then it drops and you have to like waste a bunch of time doing a backup where you like pull down a few statues and throw it across. Um, sometimes if it's if like the the first scale drops, then it's definitely worth just reloading the room. But if the second scale drops, usually you just want to throw the statues. But ideally, you just don't mess it up at all. I mean, there's a pack to save for it, and it's like not all that bad. So yeah, here I want to just kind of put this guy in this corner and roll up next to him. Um, yeah. So there's like a couple little strats to know about. Um, whenever this guy attacks something, he won't move until that animation is done. Like, if you move, or if you're, like, in the air or something, he won't move, for example. Like, there's a few of those things where you need to be aware that the spacing won't stay the same sometimes. Um, but yeah. 
Uh, and the other thing you can do is you can get him to hit you so that he doesn't have that animation at all. So I'm gonna aim up through the ledge here, and then I'm gonna wait for this back spike to pass, and then I start back hopping. And I'm gonna roll off the left here, land on this back walk after letting go, and then do that, and then I don't get anything stupid to happen. I don't remember whose movement I stole for that, but that's like a really good one. That actually might be my own thing that I came up with, but I don't know. I probably stole it from somebody, honestly. Yeah, that's generally the fastest way to do this room. For this room, you're gonna want to have Claw Shot already equipped, but I'm stupid and didn't equip it while I was waiting for the spike to pass. What am I doing? You only need it for the first gate, though. This is the second one, I'm just straight up destroy. Okay, so you see how I hit myself there? It does a heart of damage, but it uh, makes it so that that animation doesn't play, so you can roll immediately after, and the statue will be able to go with you. It's just good to know, I guess. Um, I'm a little low on health, so these pots right here, I should just point out that they have parts in them. I usually do those two clips in the air. There's a lot of just random touchscreen stuff. And then I roll this guy into position and I saw it off a couple times. And so basically now, we don't know if the door of time skip works, so you still have to do that whole sequence. Otherwise you might be able to get past that door with just having Dominion Rod. Um, but I can just more him. And we're gonna do something fun here. Ideally, we don't get hit, but whatever, it's fine. So I'm gonna drop this in front of the gate, and then I'm gonna target the close end of the red thing, turn around, and kablammo. Okay, but I should probably show the other strats of doing this room, since I'm here. So basically, alright. So what I do is I, like, walk this way, and then I walk to about here, and I use B to drop the bomb. That usually puts it in a good position, although it's kind of shaky. The other thing you can do is you can stand, like, around here and just set it down, and then target, again, like I'm talking about this front end. You see how the claw shot is grabbing this front end of the red thing, and then I just turn around so it'll knock me backwards and over the fence. Um, you have to make sure that you're actually targeting the front end, otherwise you're not going to be close enough to the bomb in that positioning. The other thing you can do is basically this. Um, you pretty much just throw this onto the platform. If you want to do that. And then you can uh, roll through, like so. That's one way of doing it. Um, the other thing you can do, which I guess I have to go all the way back to show, I'll probably just re-enter the room, honestly, at this point. Ow. Um, the other way of doing this room, which I don't do because I do the bomb boost, but I think it's worth showing because it's kind of nice. Um, the bomb boost is the fastest method, as far as I can tell, but this is similarly pretty fast. But basically what I'm going to try to do here is do this and then put this in the wall roll twice. And then we want to get it so that basically I can just roll through the gates right after that. That's one way of doing it. The bomb, is, the bomb boost is the fastest way though. Anyways, there will be a, there's a fairy in there, so generally you're low health here. It's just worth grabbing that. Um, Armagoma is still one shots you with Zora armor on them, so it's just worth pointing out I guess. Anyways, what we want to do now is basically, um... <sighs> How do I explain this? So, so Armagoma is very random. Um, there's like a number of lights that she can go across. Like, she can... I don't know if there's a minimum and a maximum, but basically... She goes to a light, and then she, at random, chooses another light, and goes to that light, and then... 
at random she'll just decide whether or not to just stay there and start firing a laser or keep going. Um, so it's definitely, it's possible to lose like a minute here to a good time with like really bad RNG, <laughs> which is part of the reason that all dungeons is not a particularly great category, but um, it's basically just like a second Zelda, essentially a second Zelda in bow, so a third Zelda in bow, I guess. But yeah, um, anyways, we'll see what we get here. I can't really use the music to, like, I think that was pretty good, but since I was, the music was playing on the pod screen, I can tell you exactly how to play the, the musical cue. So after you hit it the first time, uh, Armagoma is going to go back up to the ceiling, and, uh, she'll pick a random light to go to, she picked a far light, she picks a random wall to climb up, and then she's gonna go back to the middle and drop eggs. She only plays this cutscene the first time, um, and then you just gotta kill these guys. Okay, so ideally she starts shooting, like, right as that music plays up, so it's pretty solid. It can be a little earlier than that, if you get really good luck, but it's unlike. You also want to be sure that the, uh, the fist is not squishing you, because then it won't hit Armagoma. Let's see, so she's gonna pick, again, she picked that wall, which was a pretty close wall, and then she picked a somewhat close, uh, light, so that was pretty good. Luck. But that, again, it's another thing is random. But she'll always pick, like, one wall and one light, and then go to the middle. And then she does a random number of lights and random set of lights that she goes to. So this would be average RNG. Yeah. Or, well, not necessarily average, but... That's the audio cue I'm looking for. Okay, and then before I squish the spider, I equip on arrows. The reason being because I want to snipe this, uh... I want to snipe this eyeball with a bomb arrow. We'll see if I get it or not. Usually, the eyeball will go right. Like right here. Um, but not always. You can just shoot it with one bomb arrow by aiming like a little to the right. You can also aim at the small spiders, and that'll generally cause the explosion to kill it. Um, but yeah. Alternatively, you can just use three arrows, but I have plenty of bombs for um, the for Hyrule. I think I only need like four, and I have five, so. Actually, how many do I need? One, two, three, four. I guess you ideally you do have five, so I have just the right number. I also wasted a few, so it's like bomb routing is you probably have like five extras without having to grab any other chests. Um and since we grabbed the um the the fairy, we don't need the heart container here at all. But yeah. Um, right, what I was saying earlier is that the laser one-shots you <laughs> when you have zero armor on, so just don't get hit by the laser. The laser. Generally speaking, you have to aim higher than you think on the eyeball. Like, you can't aim at the middle of the eyeball, because that will usually just bonk off. You have to aim at, like, the very top of the eyeball. It's really weird. I don't know why it works that way. It just does. But yeah, we can skip that cutscene, and then there's gonna be an Uku cutscene here, uh, which you can't side up out of, but you can skip. Anyways, then now we can go straight to Hyrule Castle. Like I said, Palace of Twilight or Temple of Time first is just really a preference thing. It doesn't save time one way or the other. Alright, so you want to stand about here, aim a little up, and as soon as it's over the void, go ahead and do the jump attack, and skip some mailman. And 
as always, real runs actually bonk there. Okay, I'm gonna drink coffee. So, let's put it this way. In all dungeons, Hyrule Castle isn't really faster, it's just a little easier. Like, there's a couple of different strats that you can do with bow that don't really save time per se, but they, like, are, they're just easier. It's less involved. Like, uh, let's see, you kill the, the pink bokoblins, like, a little faster. Okay, and then the two Lazelfos, you don't actually have to time the bomb, like, movement, like you do in any percent that I have had to do before, which is a little annoying to do. In this case, you can just shoot an arrow at the wall and distract the Dino Elfos and then kill them with a bomb. And then in the tower, instead of basically with the last two Dino Elfos, instead of having to do the somewhat difficult jump slash quick spin to kill them quickly, um, you can just shoot at the wall and kill them both with one, one bomb arrow. Anyways. And so all of that basically just makes this easier, but not faster, so. Yeah, what I want to do here is I want to let these guys slash at me once, and then I pull this out, and then the next slash will kill all of them. I mean, it's it's functionally identical to just laying down a bomb. It doesn't really matter either way. It's just if you do that uh, final bomb arrow strat on Armagoma, you'll already have uh, bomb arrows equipped, so it's kind of nice in that regard, I guess. So same as any percent, the um, two jelly is pretty useful for this fight, otherwise you have to do it normally. Normally being what I'm going to try to show. So basically how this goes is you want to not fail any quick events. So basically how that's supposed to look is um, you saw when I did the middle thing where I was trying to hit him with three spins. So you do a jump plus quick spin and then you try to get like another spin or two I think. Um, and sometimes you can get one extra one which makes it so that you can mess up a spin in the next phase but then I mistimed the, uh, the jump spin for the final phase. Otherwise, that looked pretty much correct. Uh, if you mess up when the spins early, you can just, instead of doing a jump slash quick spin, you just want to, um... I did a backflip there, by the way, so that I can say it worked and saves a few seconds. Um, but what I was saying was, um... Instead of doing a jump slash quick spin, you just do quick spins whenever he starts to swing. Because he won't do the tornado unless you knock him, like, all the way down to where he's slumped over. You can get free damage and without causing the tornado. So yeah. But it's an extra cycle, so it's kind of like Xant where you kind of pick your poison. So I'm gonna roll three times here, line up basically here, jump attack, and uh, skip the cutscene while in midair.
You can also ZL target to pull this out. But I was not thinking. Anyways. Uh, Dark Net fight is exactly the same. You just have to equip with more stuff. And you can do the same thing you do in the Temple of Time. You want to aim, you want to stand in the middle of this diamond and aim to the left of this pillar. Um, and then you can throw the boomerang immediately after the cutscene, and it'll get the torch. Um, so what I was trying to do with that uh, Dark Nut, basically, by the way, was the fastest way to kill those guys, um, the normal ones, is to essentially... Um, as soon as they're done throwing their sword and chucking away the sheath or whatever, and you're sure you're not going to get hit, you want to approach them, slash them so that they block. Of course, it's random whether or not they'll block, basically. Um, but you want to slash so that they'll block. You go behind them, you slash twice, and then you pretty much immediately, while moving into them, you want to pull out the ball and chain, have, them, have it hit him two times and then throw, while making sure that the third hit is going to actually hit him on the way out, and that'll kill him, um, but it's kind of hard to do. It's not that much slower to just do straight up, like, two sets of five hits on him. Anyways. As always, the solution to this puzzle is top right, bottom left, bottom right, top left. roll twice, shoot a normal arrow, and then we kill both of them, because they're not blocking, so we can just kill them, even though they're Dynalphos, which is really nice. Um, yeah. So this guy has less health than the uh, City and Sky guy. So he has like as much health as the first phase of the City and Sky or all those. But what you want to do is you want to basically do the same thing to the ball and chain, and you want to throw it after hitting him the fourth time, so that if he tries to attack you, it'll hit him on the way back. Otherwise, if he backs off, you want to basically kill him with the sword slash. Uh, you should also turn into Wolf there. One, so that you can equip the bomb and arrow, the bomb arrows, but also because it's a little faster. I just completely forgot, so it's not worth it at this point. But yeah, it, it is still faster to do this as well, it's just, I always forget. <clears throat> I mean, it's pretty much self-explanatory from here, the rest of the way. You should get the boss key and then your tower, as usual. I mean, I guess there's like some slightly different stuff from this MB scan, and, but, uh, and we're gonna go through the rest of it. I'm just saying it's not complicated. I don't know why I always press B right after opening a door, <laughs> which is dumb because then sometimes I'll just. Anyways. So you want to roll twice, and then during the air, you want to pull up the sword. You want to be rolling across those diagonally, 
and you do not okay so there's there's like the square where there's four blocks in a square together and there's some blocks that connect to those diagonally you do not want to roll directly between those diagonal points you want to get a hop because if you roll directly between them you won't actually get the jump that's just something that's annoying that has to be practiced but it's like not too bad Okay, you just want to shoot these guys individually. That way the barrier will already be gone. You want to aim at this thing. It's kind of hard to do. If you get better positioning, it's a little easier. And then these guys, instead of getting jumped on the footspin, we just shoot the, uh... Missiles. It's not exactly how I intended to do it. That's fine. I should have jumped off the... That's fine. I get to show how it actually looks if you do it properly. I was trying to ad lib because I went on at the wrong time. Okay, so basically, with these spinners, how this works is if you get on the spinner when it's at the very bottom or the very top, so like there or there. Obviously, those were a little delayed for the finger points or whatever. But, um... Then it won't work. If you're if it's anywhere in the middle, then you'll be able to deal with it perfectly fine. So usually I just wait until it passes to the top of the bottom, whichever one is next. You don't want to skip that cutscene too early, because you can hit the wall if you can skip it like immediately. But again, you just kinda of stand in the spot I was standing in and clutch out there. I don't know. I, I should have probably pointed out the spot I stand in. It's fine, it's too late now. Fun little tidbit, if you game over outside here, um, and then, like, you'll spawn in front of the door, you can actually walk back through the door and soft lock. It's somewhat amusing. Anyways, um, Zelda is the exact same as normal. But we have arrows for Beast Ganon, which are really nice. Ideally, you get a 7 cycle with your triangles here, and fast, like, mid cycles or whatever. The, the amount of time she takes in between cycles is random, but that's a triangle. Um, so, one way you can know that it's a triangle is if the camera locks. Like, I'm trying. You see how I'm trying to, like, constantly move the camera side to side? If she stops and then the camera locks, she's doing a triangle. So, this is not a triangle. This is like. I can't, there's no real way of telling if it's dash or lightning early, um, but you can always tell if there's going to be a triangle before it happens. But yeah, if you, the fastest you can get, so that's a dash, the fastest you can get is a 7 cycle, um, with no triangles at all, since triangles take longer. You've already gotten one triangle, but the 7, this is not bad, this is good. Um, the 7 is basically, uh, a lightning ball, and then some attack, then a lightning ball, then three other attacks, right. um, and then a uh, another lightning ball, and that'll be seven. That's the fastest you can get. So this would be a lightning ball if this were seven. Which it is. This is really An E seven is good. I don't think I've ever had a 7 lose more than like about 10 seconds to a, a very good Zelda that was like a 7 with no triangles, so... Anyways. Um, so I already have bow equipped, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just shoot this guy in the face. What this allows me to do is not get hit by him. And also not to have to lead on the uh, fallen chain. So if you don't notice, what I'm doing here is I'm basically... I'm Jump slashing into it. What am I doing? It doesn't matter where I stand here since I have bow. Jump slash. And then two two hit combos and then a full combo. And that does the maximum damage. And basically what that's gonna do is is that he'll only he'll spawn out of the first portal here rather than doing a bunch of extra attacks. And we can kill him really fast. 
I don't know why that's the case. But this allows us to kill him with a B attack instead of having to like transform back into human and do a bunch of attacks. But yeah. Um you can stand pretty much anywhere for the second cycle. Just as long as you're like far away enough from B scan when it recharges at you, you can shoot him with a bow and then figure out what side you need to go on and dodge him. Really easy. So, oh, like quite a bit easier, honestly, than the ball and chain strat. Like, if you can do Fyrus, then Beast Cannon is just as easy, so... Uh, with the at least. I'm gonna try to go left, since I go left. Let's see if we can go. So I use four spurs to catch up here. I kind of messed up myself there. Of course, I always fuck this up because I'm stupid. Uh, I can never get a tutorial that does this correctly. Even though I get it like 100% of the time in actual runs. I'll show horseback correctly um, after this, but I'm, <laughs> it's just dumb. Um, but uh, anyways, I think my first any percent tutorial went back and showed exactly what I do. There, I like slightly updated my strat for that, so it works better. But it's hard for me to say exactly what I do in the middle of it. Pretty much what I want to do is dash twice immediately, dodge left at the last second, then hope he goes like kind of forward left-ish, which is about a 65% chance of happening on any given random file. Um, I believe if you start from a save file, it start, it's like the seed is determined at the beginning of the file or something. So like, on save files, I will always get the right direction. So I stun him, and then I time these three attacks. It's an easy fight. Um, alright, let's uh, reload this and put the proper save in so that I can show this off. It's really quite easy. I'm just dumb. So basically what I do is, like I was saying, I use two spurs um, immediately to get to him as fast as possible, dodge left at the last second, and kind of keep going straight, and then as soon as he veers off slightly left, I follow him. Um, and then basically, uh, what you do at that point is I'll use four spurs total to keep up and catch up with him before I do a spin, and then once it gets up to four total again, then I go ahead and use a couple to make it so that Zelda will not miss him. Uh, you'll see in a second. And then I just follow the rest of the way, it's really easy. The second shot is the hardest among all of those, um, but it's not even that bad, especially if you do it the way I do it. Um, and like I said, there's a 65% chance you'll get the correct pattern. If you don't get the correct pattern, it's just like... The first shot is always going to be free, basically. Um, as long as you react in time. And just kind of follow him. You can add a little bit, uh, but then after every shot, you just want to do another spin attack once Zelda starts uh, charging her bow, so that because he's gonna like go past you, and um, he'll basically um, here. She'll miss the shot if you don't force her to delay the shot by doing the spin attack. Basically, is my point. Um, and so yeah. If he goes either completely straightforward or turns like really far back left, then you just do that after every shot. Alright, 
So like I said, dash twice immediately. Dodge left. I'm going to show this correctly, God. I, I like, don't feel this listen runs, this is dumb. What's different between TP and TPHE? A lot of things. Um, alright, so... Let's see if I can actually fucking do this. This is, like, so dumb that I'm failing this. This is incredibly easy. Hey Zelda, shut up. I say, you dodge left. Well, that's what you do if you dodge too early. Let's see, now he's doing the wrong pattern, because I suck. So stupid. <laughs> of course, there I dodged too early. The time before I dodged too late. The previous time I messed up my own setup. I swear this is consistent, it's just the gaming gods want want me to convince you that it's not consistent, even though it's incredibly easy. There. There you go. That's how I do it. And then this third shot is pretty easy. So pretty much always. You can aim opponent by like... Uh, or you can aim the shot by aiming opponent towards him, basically. Is the idea. Um, Cause she'll just shoot whatever direction opponent's facing. That's why it's easier to just follow where he's going, but... Anyways. If he's going straight, it's not an issue. <laughs> now that, the, like, depending on exactly how you do it, that third shot will, like, vary a little on how he'll go, but you can generally react to it perfectly fine. It's a pretty easy shot, so. Anyways, like I said, it's, like, pretty free. <sighs> and it's always the same. It doesn't, it's like, it doesn't change based on how many items you got. But just be aware, if you want to practice horseback, uh, you're always going to get the same direction. If you do the same stuff on this save file, you're always going to get him going the same direction. And then he's dead. Alright. Um, that's pretty much all I wanted to show, though. I mean, how long have I been going? So it's been like two hours and forty-five minutes for the rest of the old dungeon shot. It's like an hour and a half long, or an hour and forty-five minutes. That's not that bad. Um, so yeah, I, I pretty much covered everything. There's some stuff that I didn't cover very well because there are any percent things that I've already covered before. So, I don't know. Um, all right, I'm probably done though. Bye.